Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of On That Corner, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomad. It has been a minute since I did a Combat Corner episode, so with UFC 305 tomorrow night in Perth, Australia. Let's talk about it. Before we jump in, thank you all for your continued support of our channel. Please do like, subscribe, and follow, and share this video. Ring that bell so that you get everything up to the minute and all the updates of all of our new content involving MMA, BKFC, you name it, along with every other sport, football, basketball, baseball on occasion, because I love baseball. Let's just ju jump right on in. Did you see the press conference between Drikis Duplessis and Israel Adesanya? Izzy cried on stage. He cried on stage. Oh, my God. You know who must have been sitting there saying, oh, man, this is great? Daniel Cormier, because Daniel Cormier cried after losing a fight. Israel Adesanya is crying just because he wants to cry about some narrative that he's trying to push. I don't know Izzy's background. I don't really care. I don't know his story, just like DDP. I don't care. They're going to fight tomorrow. And the winner will be the middleweight champion. Israel Adesanya is coming off of a loss. The UFC has gifted him another title shot. An undeserved title shot. I get it. He draws eyes. He's a name. But he got the shit kicked out of him in his last fight. And then DDP beat the guy who kicked the shit out of him. Albeit, I do think Sean Strickland won that fight over DDP. That's another story for another day. It was a close fight, but I thought Strickland won that fight. And DDP did exactly the opposite of what Strickland did to Izzy. DDP put pressure on Strickland. Izzy didn't put pressure on Strickland. Strickland put pressure on Izzy the whole fight. And there are people that think that DDP is a similar style fight, like Marvin Vittori for Izzy. I disagree. Marvin Vittori is a wrestle, wrestle, wrestle guy. He can't throw. He has sorry hands. He has sorry stand-up. Everything his game, his game is all predicated on pressure, push into the fence, take you down. That's what it is. That's his game. He couldn't do it versus Izzy in their second fight. I thought the first fight between the two of them, I thought Vittori arguably won. Second fight, it was, it was an easy fight for Izzy. DDP's not that dude. DDP is strong. He's physical. He's going to push forward. He can hit, man. He can throw. He can throw. Now, I don't think it's going to be an easy fight by any means. But I think DDP wins the fight. I think he wins the fight. And he retains his belt. He has a rematch with Strickland that should have already gone. Strickland should have already gotten this rematch. Strickland beat Paulo Costa after he lost. Strickland should be fighting this fight right now. Not Izzy. Izzy needed to win another fight to, to earn this opportunity. But the UFC plays favorites, so that's what happens here. But that press conference where he's boo-hooing about and waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go work in a bank to go be with your dad as a janitor when you were 10 and blah, blah, blah. He, 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 you know, my problem with Izzy is that Izzy, is, he he's, has to paint a picture. He has to control a narrative. And when he controls his narrative, he's the one that started this whole thing with DDP about the African champion. When the only real... African champion in the history of the UFC is Drikis Duplessis. Yes, Kamaru Usman was born in is was born in, in Nigeria. Um, and God, Francis Ngannou was born, in, I think, it was in Cameroon. Um, and Izzy was born in Nigeria as well. But Izzy left Nigeria when he was ten with his family. They went to Ghana for ten months, then they moved to New Zealand. I understand parental decision. That's fine. He's been in New Zealand for twenty five years. He never moved back to Nigeria. But then he cr claims that Drup Drikus is not African. Drikus was born in South Africa, lives in South Africa, raised in South Africa, trains in South Africa. He is an African man. He just is. And you have a problem with it because he's a white one. That's what it is. He jumps into the ring, drop, calls, calls him the N-word, <laughs> and he's the one questioning this man's, this man's African, the, the African root. Oh, man. Izzy, Izzy, 
he's become a real turn off and turn me off because I think he's a great fighter, but he his personality has become one of the ego is so so large. He's disrespectful to these guys. I mean, Strickland busted his ass, busted his ass. I wish we could have gotten a third fight with Alex Pereira. I would love to see actually at 205 where Alex isn't completely drawn out. But at the end of the day, Israel Adesanya is painting a, a, a picture of him being of him growing up in poverty. He didn't. That's why when Drickus Duplessis said, Are you bringing your servants? Because he had servants. You don't know my story. That's what Izzy was crying. Then he starts crying on stage. Like, look, man, men cry. I have no problem with men crying, but don't that, that's that's contrived. That was fake as hell. Fake as hell. Didn't like it at all. But I can't wait for this fight because these boys have some bad blood. And man, oh man, I, I I'm excited for this for this throwdown. Let's go. Go main event, Steve Ersic and Kai Car France. Um, Ersic's coming off a loss to Pantoja for the belt in a fight that was closer than a lot of people probably I didn't expect it to be as close as it was. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know about this fight. I think Ersic wins. Um, I think it'll be a good fight. I think these are two good fighters. The division is weird. Flyweight division's weird. You know, you have you have Pantoja as a champion. I know he's fighting. I know he has a fight coming up. Don't remember who it's against because the division to me is Pantoja and Brandon Moreno and then a bunch of other guys. No one jumps off the page. No one screams, come look at me. And I think at a certain point they may, they may reconsider looking at ending this division again. I think it's, a, it's quite a realistic possibility that the flyweight division might end again. Because I just, there's just, there aren't fights that are grabbing you. Just like the fights before Cejudo beat Tila, Dillashaw, there aren't fights that are saying, mm, you gotta watch this fight. Especially after the Moreno, Figueredo quadrilogy. Mm-hmm. Sorry, quad is it four times they fought? Quadrilogy, or you wanna call it? Um, now I don't, I, I love Brandon Moreno. I think Brandon Moreno is so much fun to watch. I think he has a personality. I think the rest of these guys are bland and boring. Personality wise, great fighters, just personality. They couldn't sell you anything. Lightweight fight between Matus Gamrot and Dan Hooker. I like Gamrot. I think Gamrot wins this fight rather easily. Dan Hooker at one point was a contender. Now he's just a guy. I understand why they fill up the card in Australia with all these guys from Australia and New Zealand, but he's just a guy. He's not anything that Gamrot needs to be concerned with. I think this is an easy win for Gamrot. And uh, that's the way I see that fight. I don't. I don't think. It, I don't know if. You, I don't know if it goes the distance. If it does, it might be just three rounds of takedowns. <laughs> that's that, that. That's that's what I would see if it goes the distance, or it could be a finish on the ground. But I don't. I don't see Gamrot knocking Hooker out. But I think Gamrot's going to win this fight easily. Then you got a heavyweight tie to Ivasa, Jarzinho, Rosen, strike two former contenders. It's a banger. I mean, it's fun. Neither guy's going to go anywhere in the division. But it is a banger. It is a fun fight. It is a fight to be excited about because if Tuivasa wins, you know he's going to do the shoey, which is always so funny. It's so funny yet so freaking disgusting that you would drink a beer out of someone else's shoe. That's just so nasty. Um, Rosen strike ever since he lost to uh, Francis Ngannou has not been... You know, he's not the same guy. He's, I mean, when he lost that fight, he, I think he was undefeated. I mean, let me take a look real quick. When he, when he, when he fought, he's ranked 12. They're 10 versus 12. You know, Rose, Rose strike looked like a killer early on. But since that fight with uh, Nganu, where he got finished in 20 seconds, he, he did beat Junior Dos Santos. He lost to Cyril Gunn in a decision. He did beat Augusto Sakai. He lost to Curtis Blades in a decision. He got finished by Volkov. He did beat Dockhouse in a dis- in, in a in a in the twenty three second knockout. But these aren't Dockhouse is not a contender. He got 
beaten up by Jolton. He got booked by Jolton Almeida in, in a round. You know, his last fight, he has a win. But again, these are not, I mean, he's, it's win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. I mean, this is not a guy who's a contender. Tui Vasa, you know, is fun. He's a, he's a nice guy. He's pleasant. But again, another guy who, you know, he's coming off of one, two, three, how many straight loss? Four, four straight losses. He lost to Marcin Tubora. He lost to Volkov. He lost to Pavlovich. He's lost to Gan. Like, this is his last four fights. If he loses again, he might get cut. The only reason he wouldn't is because he's fun. But if you go, oh, and if you lose five in a row, typically in the UFC, unless you're Tony Ferguson or smiling Sam Alvey, you get cut. So we'll see. You know, I think this is a must win for Tui Vasa because he could be in danger beyond the chopping block. And then finally, we have uh, Li Jingyang. Ah, I can't pronounce his name. And Carlos Prates, Prates, I, I like, you know, this isn't, we haven't seen Jing Liang for a, a minute. Um, but yeah, let me see who I got here. So I got DDP, I got Ursic, I got Gamera, I got, who do I got? Damn. Rosen strikes the favorite. Tuivasa is the underdog. I got Tuivasa. He's going he's to break the, the street. And uh, I got Jing Liang. So those are my five picks. I'll probably be wrong because <laughs> picking fights to me is a nightmare. Um, I did hear on uh, one of the one of the radio shows on Sirius with Dean, Dean Thomas. He mentioned Jack Jenkins. I'm gonna be watching. I want to see Jack Jenkins fight because he said he he's a, he's a savage. So I want to I want to see Jack Jenkins fight. Um, not a whole lot of other big names that are on this card, on the undercard. I mean, Junior Taffa is fighting. He's a, another Australian guy. I mean, this is filled with Australian fighters. So check it out tomorrow, UFC 305. Be sure to check it out. We'll be watching. Come on now.